America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. Here is K-7. Colonies have assumed a new importance in the world of today, for many nations depend upon their colonial empires for raw materials. Recently, residents of one nation's colonies have been leaving for their homeland because of fears of an uprising. Authorities investigated and found these fears well-grounded. Enemy aliens were found to be concentrated in several cities and preparing to strike while the mother country was otherwise engaged. Further investigation was found advisable, and my old friend Special Agent Z was engaged for this work. John Holbrook will take up the story at this point. Thank you, K-7. Our story begins as Agent Z and his assistant, Patricia Norwood, talk with the Consul General of an important colony. They've just arrived after a long ocean trip, and Agent Z is attempting to get as much information as possible. Agent Z. Yes? I can't tell you how glad I am that you and Miss Norwood arrived at this time. Well, suppose you give us the pictures you see it. We know there has been a concentration of enemy aliens. Have they stirred up any trouble? No. No, they've been quiet enough. They have a feeling that it's to calm before a storm. You must have a reason. I have, Miss Norwood. Here, this report would interest you. Suppose you read it, Agent Z. Yes. It was wireless by one of our destroyers. You received it this morning, I see. Suggest you investigate ownership of fishing smack Tangier. Stop boat yesterday. Made routine inspection of papers. About 20 minutes later, Tangier went to bottom. Sea was calm. Believe boat was scuttled by crew. Well, this message may be important. Well, Z, what do you think is the explanation? Well, Pat, I can only guess. But my guess would be that the Tangier carried contraband of some kind. If it was deliberately sunk, the action was taken to prevent a second and more thorough search. That's exactly what I think, Agency. But what could the fishing boats be doing? Well, they could bring in arms, Pat. Yes. I hesitated to voice that thought, Agency. Well, sir, I'll start my investigation at once. And the first thing I'm going to do is to find out why the fishing boat Tangier sank. And this afternoon, I want a seaplane put at our disposal. Tomorrow, I'll want a small seagoing tug and diving equipment. That afternoon, Agent C and Patricia flew out over the ocean for an observation flight. Now, we must be almost over the spot, Pat. The position given by the destroyer was 34 degrees, 10 minutes north, 10 degrees west. We're almost there. I can still see the bottom clearly, Z. We should be able to sight the wreck. Yes, I was sure we could. The ocean isn't more than 40 or 50 feet deep here. The bottom is sandy. That makes it easy to see from a plane. Z, yes? there's a boat off to the left. I just sighted it, Pat. I'm going to fly over them. Use the glasses. I can't make out what they're doing. Wait, Z. Yes, what is it? Z. Yes? That boat is directly over the wreck of the Tangier. I see it lying on the sandy bottom. Yes, you're right, Pat. And the boat is starting away. They've seen us. Hang on, we're going down. What are you going to do, Z? I'm going to land and mark the spot. That boat getting away now is down there for some reason. I want to know why. We'll mark the spot with a buoy and come back here tonight. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to find out why the Tangier sank. <laughs> Agent Z landed over the sunken Tangier and marked the spot with a small buoy. Then he and Patricia went ashore. A few hours later, they returned on a seagoing tug and anchored over the wreck for the night. We join them at dawn as Z prepares his diving equipment to go below and examine the wreck. Well, the sea is calm this morning, Pat. I ought not to be down more than half an hour. Z, yes? are you sure it's safe for you to go down alone? There are only four members of the crew on this tug. And none of them has had any diving experience. Oh, there's no danger, Pat. We've taken soundings. The Tangier is only 40 feet below the surface. I've gone down deeper than that a good many times. Yes, but suppose something should happen. Ah, nothing can happen. I don't even need a diving suit on this job. I'll just slip this helmet over my head, and the force of the air being pumped down to me holds the water out. It's like turning a teacup over in a basin of water. 
The air is cupped in around my head. But what about those lead shoes you're putting on? Well, these shoes are half weight. Just heavy enough to hold me right side up on the bottom. There. They're on. Now I'll slip the helmet on. We'll test the telephone lines. Put your headset on, Pat. All right, please. The only way we can talk to each other after I put my helmet on is by telephone. I'm ready. Can you lift the helmet? Yeah, sure. Here it goes on, Pat. Is it all right? Yes. Yeah. Here comes our native captain. He knows how to man the air pump. Tell him to start. Start the air pump, Captain. Hurry. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. I'm ready. <laughs> Don't sound so desperate, Pat. Is your telephone headset working all right? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, Lee, I can hear you. All right. I'm going over the side. As soon as I'm a foot or two underwater, I'll stop for a minute and make sure the helmet is watertight before going down. You see that the air keeps coming, and don't worry. I'll talk to you every minute I'm on the bottom. Z, be careful. Huh? The rope ladder's to your right. I see it. Goodbye, Pat. Pat, I'm under. Helmet seems all right. You sure it doesn't leak? Oh, it's okay. I'm going down. Keep talking, Z. Are you all right? Yes, Pat. Almost on the bottom now. I can see the Tangier. I'm down. The ship is lying on its side. Can you see inside? No. Wait. I'm going to climb up on the side. There's a cabin door broken off. Z? Z, I can't see you now. I've been watching over the rail. I'm up on the side. I think I can go in, Pat. One thing I'm sure of, this boat was deliberately scuttled. There are no holes in the hull. I'm going to try and get inside. Keep the line straight up there. I'm watching them. I'm inside. I can see, too. Pat, this cabin is full of cases. Here's one broken open. Can you see what's in them? Yes. Here's the answer, Pat. The Tangier was smuggling a rifle. There are 24 cases down here. I'm going to try and... Z? Can you hear me, Z? What's the matter? My lines, Pat. They're fouled. It'll be all right. Keep the air coming. Have you got them loose? Z? Z, can you hear me? Yes, Pat. The air line is free. It's the telephone line that's fouled. I'll get it. Z? Z, answer me. Z, answer me, Z. Z, can you hear me? As Z went below the surface of the water, a powerful motorboat came into sight behind them. A man stood in its bow and studied the tug through a powerful glass. Keep the motors running. Can you see them? Yes. We'll come up on them on the port side. They're diving off the starboard. All right, let's go. You are sure they won't see us? They are all on the starboard side, watching the man who is below the surface. We'll board them before they even know we're near. All right. They can't see us now. The cabin is between them and us. We're closing in. How many do you think are aboard the tug? Uh, four or five. Probably two men below the deck in the engine room. Two more in the girl around the deck. The special agent is probably the one who was diving. Shut off the motors. They drift up on the side. Now, as soon as we are alongside, you and I will board. We'll take them unexpectedly. Have your gun, then ready. I've got it. All right. I'll go around the bow and surprise them. You're on the stern. Come up behind them. We'll have them between us. Ready. We come alongside. Hold it. Don't let the boats bump. Uh, All right. Uh, now, one of you stay here. That one, hold the boats together. Come on, wall back. Remember, have your gun ready. Z. Z, can you hear me? Are you all right? Something's gone wrong. Keep the air going down. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Hello. Hello, Z. Z, if you hear me, answer. Hello. Your boat's Hello. covered. Don't try to move. Who are you? Remove that telephone headset, mademoiselle. But I... Your friend on the bottom need not know we are here. 
Search that one, Balbuck. He has no gun. Wait, you stop him pumping. There's no air going down. He's down there. He's got to have air. We will leave him there. Cut the air and telephone lines going over the rail, Balbuck. No. No, you can't. <laughs> it is done, mademoiselle. Your friend will remain down with the tangier. Balbuck, go down to the engine room. There must be two or three more aboard. Take them prisoners. At once. You'll both stand where right. you are. If either one of you moves, I'll shoot. Oh, see, you're safe. Yes, Pat, I'm safe. When my lion's fouled, I managed to slip out of the helmet and come to the surface. Evidently, I arrived just in time. Now, Pat, take their guns. I've found all the evidence I need. These men are gun runners. <laughs> Warships were sent to the colony and are maintaining a vigilant watch to prevent further attempts of gun running. Within the colony, enemy aliens have been rounded up and deported. Peace depends on constant vigilance. We must never slacken that vigilance. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking. (laughs) 